Ah, flight. What a concept. Ever since humankind first had the capacity to wonder, the sight of a bird flying must have been astounding. Who hasn't dreamed of flying through the air like winged creatures? But despite our valiant attempts, gravity thwarted our efforts every time. So our best creative minds came together using the laws of physics to solve the problem. Physics, it's not just a good idea, it's the law. The Cade Museum Santa Fe College, and Prioria Robotics, together with Dance Alive National Ballet, present to you the physics of flight. For any object to fly, whether it's an insect, a bird, a plane, a helicopter, or a human being, there are four physical forces that must be taken into account. Weight, lift, drag, and thrust. Weight is the combined load of the flying object and pulls the object downward because of the force of gravity. Lift overcomes the downward force of weight and is produced by the dynamic effect of the air acting on the wing. Drag is a force exerted on an object moving through the air. Thrust is the forward force produced by an engine, a propeller, or the flapping wings of a bird. It opposes or overcomes the force of drag. If an object is stationary and all four of these forces, lift, weight, drag, and thrust, are in perfect balance, there is no motion. To fly, an object must generate enough thrust to overcome drag and enough lift to overcome weight. To understand the mechanics of flight, remember that air is actually a fluid and behaves much like water. Air has a density made up of different molecules of specific weights such as nitrogen, oxygen, and traces of carbon dioxide. The principle of buoyancy discovered by Archimedes holds for air just as it does for water. If an object has lower density than air and displaces more air than it weighs, then it's buoyant and can float in the air without using energy. But most things that fly are heavier than air and must generate enough power to move through the air on their own. Moving through air creates drag, much like the resistance you feel when swimming through water. The more drag you have on a plane, the more energy or thrust you need to fly it. To minimize the forces of drag, it helps to minimize the surface area of the plane, including the wing. A flat wing, however, is ineffective. The ancient Chinese discovered that kites with curved surfaces flew better than kites with flat surfaces. Scientific experiments proved that an effective wing should be slightly curved at the top and flat at the bottom. This shape is called camber. The camber of a wing forces the air flowing over the top to flow faster than the air flowing under the flat surface of the wing. In the 1700s, 
Daniel Bernoulli discovered that fast moving air creates lower pressure than slower moving air. The difference in air speed between the top and bottom of the wing creates a difference in air pressure. The higher pressure at the bottom of the wing forces the wing up, helping the plane to achieve lift. The lift of a wing is also helped by Newton's third law of motion, which states that for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. As air flows over the camber of the wing, it's forced downward and pushes against the ground. This creates an equal and opposite reaction, and the wing is forced up. Together, Newton's and Bernoulli's principles explain the physics behind lift. A plane's engine must generate enough thrust to reach speeds high enough to create the proper wind currents over the wing. A plane should always take off into the wind. Taking off into the wind helps take advantage of the faster airflow over the camber of the wing and helps to generate the lift needed to counteract the weight of the plane. And now we are ready for takeoff. So the next time a plane takes off, think of what it represents. Thousands of years of human imagination and the power of the creative mind.